to license it. Meep, meep. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 64 scale Hot Wheels Aston Martin 177. It's a proper supercar and it's aptly named as only 77 of these were produced in real life. Cue the James Bond theme music. In this video, I'm participating in a Three Blind Mice Invitational Build-Off. Everyone's working on the same model. This one is new, right out of the box, so it doesn't have a thing wrong with it. However, I'm going to turn mine into the Gran Turismo model that appears in the PS4 video games Gran Turismo 6 and Gran Turismo Sport. I'll show you those later. And I just told you everything I know about gaming. <laughs> I've never done it, but I do like the look of this particular livery that they use. I wonder if someone else in the Invitational will start with the Gran Turismo look and turn it into something else. That would be funny. There's only one post on this one. Holding it together at the back, the front is held in place by a clip, which is the front grille. And I just wiggle that out right there. It's a plastic base today. And a two-seat sport interior. Uh, not over the top in details here, but it's rather a smoky shaded windshield. And you're really not going to see much of the interior. But I will detail the back. It's got some engine detail that I want you to see. I'm going to keep these wheels because I don't have anything better than those. And as you know, my makeovers end up as gifts for kids. So I, I don't put a whole lot of extra expense into them. I use what's usable and I thought this set of wheels looked pretty good. I was recently asked why I don't tap out the post after I drill them and that's simply because I've got a bag of about 300 self-tapping screws and they hold just fine and it saves me that one little extra step. In the autumn of 2008 a camouflage mock-up of a car was displayed at the Aston Martin booth in the Paris Motor Show. This announced the development of what was to be a 77 car run on its new ultra-exclusive limited edition flagship. The fully rendered design of this model, appropriately dubbed the 177, was shown at the spring 2009 Geneva Motor Show and a production version followed soon afterwards. I've always liked the Aston Martin cars, like many of us uh, going back to Goldfinger and Sean Connery driving his Aston Martin on the Furka Pass in Switzerland, not far from where I live. And it has evolved and had some interesting changes over the generations to what I'm holding now. Here's why we wear goggles. That's what flies off of the wire brush. It's almost all of them. The rest of them are stuck in my forehead and I'm going to be pulling them out for the next couple of days. 
I'm giving some careful attention here with my X-Acto knife blade just to pick out any residual paint that gets stuck in the nooks and crannies. This is my favorite part of the bare metal detail when I put the Scotch-Brite attachment on. You can see that it totally changes the luster of the finish on the bare metal car. It's just so satisfying for me when I watch that. And there's Daniel Craig on my newspaper liner in the spray booth. How apropos is that? James Bond. And on the other side is John Lennon. I, I was doing this on Lennon's 80th birthday. Beatles fans. Here's the Gran Turismo livery that I'm going for. This is just an internet pick. This is not mine. This is what I'm striving to do. And this is a technique that I've been trying lately. I have transparent decals and I need to have them show white. And they won't. They're going to show whatever color they go on top of. So I have placed a couple of small tabs of masking tape on top of the primer job and now I'm applying the top coat. And when I remove the masking that's exactly where the decals will go. So you have to know in advance. I left the wheels on today. I just covered them up here for a quick transformation from gray to black on the base. Now I will carefully remove the masking and it doesn't need to look perfect. Don't worry about these. Uh, it's just to give a white background exactly where the decal will go. Sometimes when you buy a can of metallic spray from the auto body shop, things can go wrong because they're meant to go on your full-scale car, and the metal fleck doesn't always look right on a scale car, but today I got lucky and it. This one looks good. I'm pleased with how it, it turned out. I make my own decals and I print them on a laser printer on blue back paper, which you'll see when that blue slides away here. Magic. What's left is the white patch underneath. And I position that with a toothpick and I'll put a little bit of decal set solvent on there. That actually contours it to the lines which is important in this case because of the body lines on the doors of the Aston Martin. The Gran Turismo Sport model that I'm going after actually has these ghost stripes on it. They're very, very subtle. So I was hoping when I printed it in just a light blue that that on top of the silver would show up, and it did. I, I just got a good score there. They're not supposed to be bold and jump out at you. Here are the microscopic Gran Turismo logos going on as per the original in the bottom corner just beneath the doors. Some careful detailing usually comes as a result of some online research by Google Images and here I'm doing some clear red Tamiya paint in the taillights. 
to give it a nice realistic effect. While the 177 retains the handsome image of models such as the DB9 and the DBS, its styling has been greatly modified, both in shape and aerodynamics. At first glance, it may appear to be just a heavily modified production car, but in reality, the 177 is a special model that had been newly developed completely from the ground up. The chassis was developed together with Cosworth, based on the conventional 6-liter V12 and its 7,312 cc of displacement created the most power, a whopping 749 brake horsepower of any normally aspirated engine to date. Aston's and Cosworth's collaboration also resulted in reducing the engine size by 25% and that allowed it to be mounted three inches lower than most other V12 engines and nearly 10 inches behind the front axle. This greatly contributed to the agility of its handling and cornering performance. This is my nod to that high performance and the specs of the 177. I went ahead and added four exhaust tips on the back and then I worked some Tamiya putty around that to contour them into the base. And here I'm just applying some paint on top of the putty to blend it in and make it match. Oh, I think that looks pretty smooth. The price tag was announced at 1.2 million pounds in the UK and that's 1.9 million US dollars but all 77 cars sold out in just the one year since the start of its delivery in the beginning of 2011. People that have the money wanted this car and you can see why. It's gorgeous. The back clicks into place over the one post and the singular screw that holds it all together goes back in as it should and this 177 is in the bag. Let's have a closer look. The ghost stripes look good. I went black on the grill. And I like that special headlight effect that I did with decals. It's more realistic than painting them uh, with a glob of chrome. Original wheels, still spinning and rolling as they should. You don't really see the interior through that dark glass, but I did touch up the back window view. There's my power exhaust system. Clear coat gave it a glassy finish, really smooth. And a black paint job on the bottom. Looking good. As it careens off my coffee cup. Here's what it was out of the box. Looking brand new. And absolutely nothing wrong with it, except an unfortunate scratch on that white stripe. And here's my Gran Turismo PS4 video game model. I like it. Yeah, looking very good. It goes into a gift bag and it'll make its way to the Goodwill store in time for Christmas for a lucky boy or girl. Thank you to the Three Blind Mice for sponsoring this build. I will add a link in the description so you can see the recap of all of the participants. I'd sure be happy if you gave this video a thumbs up. I hope you'll visit my channel again soon and often. It's coffee time.